Hey everyone, here's something a little different. I've had a bunch of requests to make a video talking about how I tune my drums and also just to talk about exactly what these drums are and the sizes and what heads I'm using. So I'm very happy to do that and I'm really glad that people seem to like the sound of the drums, especially with the way I'm doing this. Obviously these are not ideal uh, recording circumstances. This is a very low-tech operation. I'm just doing this on my phone in my echoey apartment, but I'm glad that people still seem to like the sound of the drums. So just to quickly go over what these are, the bass drum and the tom-toms are Ludwig club dates from 1965, a 14 by 20 inch bass drum, 8 by 12, and 14 by 14 tom-toms. And I made a few modifications. I had the tom mount and the cymbal holder. I had these switched to a different kind of Ludwig tom mount and cymbal holder that I just liked better than what had come on these originally. And these have been my main drums for maybe about 13 years. Um, for the heads on the bass drum, I have calfskin heads on both sides and they're Ludwig calfskin heads from around 1960 that I got off of a different vintage drum. but. They still work fine and have held up, and I've had them on this drum for maybe almost the whole time that I've had these. And I have a felt strip on each head running horizontally about a couple of inches below the center of the drum. And on the batter head, I have two pieces of Dr. Scholl's moleskin where the beater hits. On the uh, small tom, on the top, I have a Gretsch Broadcaster calfskin head, I guess from the 50s or 60s, that I've had for maybe 25 years. And on the bottom, I have plastic on the bottoms of my toms and snare drum. I'm not very particular, uh, so I had to check to see what I had even, but on the bottom of this uh, small tom is a old Remo Fiber Skin 2, not even a Fiber Skin 3, but a Fiber Skin 2. So I've also had that head for around 25 years. Both the heads on this drum I got from a mentor of mine, Chuck Riggs, great drummer, someone very important in my life, and these heads have, hold up, have held up. I haven't had them on my drums the entire time for 25 years, but I've had these on various sets of drums most of that time, and they've held up. Even the calfskin head, which had a rip in it that Chuck had repaired before he gave it to me, so they still work. And uh, this, the top rim here has uh, this fell one time, and the rim is all dented. When I get to my tuning method, you'll see my tuning method is pretty sloppy. I'm actually not sure how helpful it will be, but there's a lot of things like that with these drums, just stretched out heads and bent rims and things. On the floor tom, the batter head is a calfskin head from Stern Tanning. They're still around, you can still get calfskin heads from them. This head I've had for a long time, definitely well over 10 years. And maybe you can see this head is so stretched. It's really loose actually, but it's so stretched that it comes up almost exactly uh, flush with the top of the rim. It's really stretched out. And on the bottom, I just have a Remo coated ambassador. Um, on the snare drum, uh, on the top, I have a Kentville kangaroo skin head, which I like a lot. And on the bottom, again, I had to check this, but I have a clear Evans 300. And I took the mufflers out of the snare drum and the toms. They had, um, you know, those internal mufflers. I took those out because I knew I wouldn't use them and I didn't want them rattling around. That was also something that some of my mentors taught me and also that I saw in photos of Gene Krupa and a lot of people back then would just take their mufflers out. But that's what I've always done. The snare drum, by the way, is a 50s WFL 5.5 by 14 Barrett Deems model. And I do have the snare drum that came with the rest of this set, a Ludwig Pioneer 6 lug drum, which I like a lot and I used a lot, but overall I like the 8 lug snare drum better. So that's what the drums are. So for my tuning method, which as I said is pretty sloppy and uh, Anyway, I know a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of videos about drum tuning, where people really get into, I mean, this is pretty standard actually, you know, really being careful to match the pitch at each lug, 
and sometimes using a drum dial or some other device to measure the tension or the pitch to make sure it's even all around. And then a lot of people have a very specific relationship between the top and bottom head that they're always going for, that one is higher than the other, and that's always how they tune, or a specific interval of a minor third or a fourth between the heads, and that's something they always do. So obviously, those methods work great for a lot of people, but I don't really do it that way. Um, I just go mainly by feel. And you know, just to say, sort of the ideal sound that I'm going for, Gene Krupa was the first jazz drummer I ever got into. His sound has had a huge influence on me. George Wetling is another drummer. George Wetling and Gene Krupa, those are probably my two favorite drum sounds. Then there are a lot of other drummers, Joe Jones and Dave Tuff, and a lot of other drummers who have influenced that. But my basic idea of how I want my drums to sound really, I think, goes back to Gene Krupa and just a very deep, low, full sound, a warm sound with some ring and some overtones, just a nice, natural drum sound. So what I do, uh, if I put a new head on, and I, I don't change these heads often at all, unless they break, and I don't break a head very often, luckily. But if I'm putting a new head on, or I just want to retune the drum uh, from the beginning, I'll, sort of, I'll just get everything you know, finger tight. And then what I'll do, I'll start with the bottom head, and I'll just kind of tune it, I'll just go around and get all the wrinkles out. And I'm not really being so careful to match the pitches or anything, I'm doing it mostly by feel. Get the wrinkles out and just get it so that the head starts to have some tension and just starts to have a pitch to it. So that's maybe just above getting all the wrinkles out. And I sort of find that, again, mainly just by just pressing on the head. You know, that's why it's hard to do this in a video, but I just, have, I just know how I want it to feel. And I'll sort of go by the feel of the head and also just the feel of the drum key in my hand as there starts to be some resistance that's usually about the spot where it's kind of a little above getting the wrinkles out. So I'll do that for both heads. And at that point, the drum is usually, you know, it's, it's, it's still very low. And it's probably like a pretty booming sound at that point. Sometimes that works fine just like that, but once I get it that way, both heads just above getting all the wrinkles out, just so that there's a little bit of pitch and slight firmness to the head, then if I feel like the drum is too boomy and I want some more articulation or I want the pitch a little higher, then I'll tune the bottom head. I'll maybe go up one or two turns. Uh, and when I do this, sometimes I go across, sometimes I go around. I'm not that uh, particular about it. But so maybe if I need a little more definition to the sound, a little higher pitch, I'll tune the drum, the bottom head, up one or two turns. Oh, my ride is here again. Classic. Uh, there's a fire station and a police station right over here, so sometimes it gets loud. I apologize for that. Anyway. So if I want it the other way, if I feel that I need more depth to the sound, I want it a little lower, then I'll usually take the bottom head down a turn or maybe two. So the way it's worked out on these drums at the moment, uh, and the way it's been in, in you know, pretty much all of these videos, obviously the heads are affected by the weather, but basically the bottom heads on my snare drum, small tom, and the front head on my bass drum, those are all higher than the batter head. But on my floor tom, the bottom head is actually lower than the batter head. So that's just how it worked out. And I'm always kind of tuning for the specific drum and the specific room that I'm in. Um, what I do then, after I get it pretty much like that, because I am using uh, these heads that are affected by weather and because every room is different, then I'll wait until I get to the gig to make any adjustments that I need to make. And usually when I do those at the gig, that's only the batter heads that I'll adjust, either up or down, depending on what I need to get for, the, for that sound that I want. But I'm not, again, being very particular about it. I'm just kind of going by feel, and if I get to the gig and the drum just sounds a little too low, I'll just take the batter head up one or two turns. It's too tight, I'll take it down. With the calfskin heads, if I 
tighten the drum at the beginning of the gig. I try to remember to loosen it by the same amount at the end, just so the heads don't stretch quite as fast. On the bass drum, I won't really worry about that much. I don't mind if these heads stretch. And also with the bass drum, I should say, when I fine tune the bass drum, I almost never adjust all the tension rods. I do it pretty much just with the top four, sometimes only the top two on the batter side. And I mentioned this in another video. A friend of George Wetling told me that that's how George Wetling would fine tune his bass drum. And I started doing that many years ago and it works. I don't do it on the other drums. I don't think it would work well on a snare drum, but I find that it works great on a bass drum. So there's again, something that kind of goes against what I think a lot of people do because the tension on all the uh, lugs on my bass drum is definitely not even. It's all out of whack because I'm only adjusting the top two or the top four. Uh, and my bass drum, if you see it from the side, the hoops are actually kind of warped because of that uneven tension. But I don't mind that. That's just the way it works for me to do it. So I'll just use those. If I feel I need the bass drum a little tighter, I'll just adjust these two or, or all four of them if I need it looser. Usually, you know, just take two of them or all four down, you know? Again, not being so precise by it. Um, with the snare drum, the only other thing I would say, usually I like the snare drum pretty loose. Lately I've had it particularly uh, loose. And when I have it like that, I like to have the snares kind of tight because I find that if the drum is really loose and the snares are pretty loose, it just gets a little muddy for me. So having the drum loose with the snares tight, I find I can still get a nice ringing rim shot, but then there's articulation to the drum while still having a fat sound. If I have the drum tighter, either because that's just the mood I happen to be in or because of the weather, the drum is just gonna be tight and there's nothing I can do about it. Or if I'm playing house drum somewhere and it's a tight snare drum and I don't have time to adjust it. If the snare, if the drum is tuned high, then I'll loosen the snares so that they rattle a little bit. Because then I, if the drum is tight, I find that then that adds a little body to the drum and makes it uh, not as piercing the attack, it sort of smooths it out a little bit to me. So that's one other thing that I do. The snares kind of opposite of how the drum is. If the drum is loose, the snares are tight. If the drum is tight, the snares are loose. So, um, like I said, I don't know how helpful that is. My, my tuning method, it really is just kind of a feel thing. But I would just say to anyone, as long as you get the result that you want, I don't think it matters how you do it. I know a lot of great drummers who are so hung up about drum tuning and have really gotten themselves in this mindset, you know, where they think, oh, I don't know how to tune a drum, but their drums sound great. So whatever method you use, however your drums sound, there are going to be some people who like how your drums sound and some people who don't like how your drums sound. So obviously you want to make sure that you like how they sound. So I think whatever method you use to get the result that you want, as long as it, you get what you want, it doesn't matter how you got there. So I would say to anyone, just don't be afraid to try alternative tuning methods or if you have your own crazy thing that works for you, as long as it works for you, that's great. Um, I would maybe just add to that that this method that I have, I think it works well for the sound that I want and these kinds of drums and heads, these older drums with a slightly less perfect bearing edge and the calfskin heads. It works well for getting, you know, I, I don't know how well this would work if you were going for a modern, clean studio sound, but for the sound that I like, which is even a little, a little ratty, just, a, you know, a little messed up even with, with overtones and, and, and not everything is perfect, I think this works well. So I hope that was helpful, everyone. Uh, people have also asked me to talk about the symbols that I use in these videos, so, and what weights they are and everything. So I'll do another video about that, and I have more planned about Joe Jones and a variety of things. So let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see, and I will be back soon. Thanks.